Ghost Simulator, like most games, has grown over the years and become much more complicated than it was originally designed to be. In the early progression of Ghost Simulator with the main areas and antenna upgrades, players are very easily able to progress through the game in a linear fashion and understand what they should do next. As with most games, there's been certain areas that make new players really confused and are unnecessarily complicated for those who don't actually have foresight. And so I've decided to make this video going over the most confusing part of Ghost Simulator and showing you guys how the best way to get through. Area of Ghost Simulator is of course going to be when you upgrade your antenna to level 10 for the first time. This is the most confusing since it unlocks so much new content for players and doesn't leave a very clear path on what you should do. While you're still working on Captain Finsley in the beach, you get access to the level 10 area, which gives you access to Blaze, Loon in the forest, but also to a whole new portal, Ghost World, which is a huge another expansive area with a ton of quests that can just get really confusing really quick. Now taking a quick look at Ghost World, you can clearly see why people get super confused when they get here for the first time. There's tons of NPCs dotted all around the area. In the clear way to upgrade that you have had in the past, which is to upgrade your antenna level, is locked behind an item that you have no idea how to do. On top of that, the ghosts around here have varying degrees of health and you don't really know where exactly to get started since you have many different paths that you think you may need to do, and some of which aren't really helpful in the long run and are kind of just a giant waste of time. Now the first advice I'd give for anyone starting into this very difficult area of Ghost Simulator would be to just continue working on Finsley and ignore all the new content you have so far. Although you may be able to make it more efficient by working on more quests at the same time, Finsley is really helpful in, in the long run and will at least help you get through the rest of Main Hub without being too confused. Now this, this only helps for a little bit and you still will need to deal with all the other quests later, but at least gives a very good starting point for new players and allows the same linear tra transition that you're used to throughout the game without having to rely on a new concept like Ghost World. Now once you are done with Finsley, that's when the complications really start since you do have access to Luna and Blaze still in the main hub and you may want to do those before moving on to Ghost World. I'd recommend not, and actually I'd say never even worry about doing Lunar Blaze since their quests aren't really worth it, so just skip those two quests here in the main hub and move straight over to Ghost World. Now here in Ghost World you have that same problem with way too many quest lines and no real way to know which one you should be doing, um, but to clear it up I'm just going to go over all the NPCs and tell you which ones are really not worth starting on. For instance, Shelly here, although she does give you a good perk with giving you another pet slot, she takes way too long, and honestly, since most players don't have very good stat pets, having one additional pet slot won't add too much in terms of stats. Also, Bovin up here, or Joven, whatever his name is, he isn't he saves throughout Rebirth, so you can start working on him now, but he isn't really worth spending too much time on since it does require quite a bit of unboxing that isn't very easy to do right at the moment. Same thing with Dylan or Jill in here, which doesn't give a good reward, you should just skip for the time being. And then the infinite quest line of Victor obviously should be skipped since infinite quest lines aren't really worth doing. Now Ace over here is a really short one that you it's pretty easy to do and so you might as well grab it. Doesn't take too much time so and gives a decent introduction to crate keys. Now so far we haven't had haven't had you do any quests, but once you get over here to the courtyard, you can start working on Leo and Yoko both in at the same time as each other, just mainly working on which other one has the easier quests. Um, these two might take a little bit of time since they do require you to do some high health ghosts, which you probably aren't prepared for since you did just go ahead and skip Shelly. But they, doing these two have both have useful perks and will actually provide as a nice little transition into working on the more difficult quests that you need to do in Ghost World, namely at Gatekeeper over here. And since the they both have useful perks anyways, doing them doesn't hurt you too much. Now as I said before, the next quest that you should really be working on is Gatekeeper over here. It's a really quick quest line if you actually are able to handle the ghosts in here, which is why I'd recommend finishing up Leo and Yoko before moving on into here, and maybe even trying to do Fern and Gatekeeper at the same time to just double up a little bit more on your ghost collection, although you really don't need to do Fern until at, when you're closer and actually done with Ghost World since 
which isn't too useful for progression wise. And now the big thing about doing Gatekeeper is he actually gives you the reward that you need to unlock the next antenna upgrade. Basically is what most people are trying to do when they get into the level 10 antenna. And so doing that in this way really maximizes the amount of time that you don't have to spend since you are not just skipping straight into Gatekeeper. You do, do spend a little bit more time upgrading and stuff but it does give you access to more perks that you do need later on anyways. Now there's one more area in Ghost World and that's going to be the musical meadows that you need to unlock as a bonus biome in this world. Now I wouldn't recommend spending too much time trying to unlock this since there's no real reason to get into it until you get to Agent Blaze which is at the end of the back door and such a while away from it so as to not worry about it. And the only quest that's actually found in there is Ghost Hunter Jax which is Again, a huge waste of time similar to Luna and Blaze since all it really gives is a pet and a board that are overshadowed by current pet stats from code. One of the main difficulties that people have once they get to Ghost World is the lack of equipment like the vacuums and packs. And so upgrading those can actually be something you may need to focus on during your time in Ghost World. And to make the most out of getting your equipment, you do need to remember that you may need to actually go ahead and grind some of the ghosts that are in higher health to get enough souls to do so. And that's where Finsley really helps in since you are able to, with him, be able to collect more ghosts at the same time. And especially if you're struggling with ghosts, having Finsley unlocked before starting into Ghost World can be super helpful for progressing. Another thing is for finding, there are some find items in the Ghost World that are actually pretty hard to find. Uh, most of them are going to be rings and such. But the easiest way that I've found to find rings in Ghost, Certain, in Ghost World is to just fly up as high as you can and look down. Since most of them are visible from the top, you are able to see quite a bit by just flying up. For instance, there's that one, that one, that one, and that one that you can just see by flying up high. And another thing is, when you are working on quests, um, you can always, since Ghost Symbol is really open, go ahead and bounce between different areas of ghosts and actually maximize a little bit more time. Since it does take a minute for ghosts to respawn, you can, instead of just waiting around here for them to go respawn, go grab another area where you need ghosts from, and go ahead and grab ghosts from there, and then alternate between those two areas to maximize the respawn time and so you aren't waiting as much. Another big issue for quests here that many people run into is that they require quite a bit of bosses. Both Leo and Yoko have pretty big dependency on doing bosses for the quest line. And to do those easily, you can go ahead and just server hop in public servers really quickly using this to just hop between main world, main hub, and ghost world until you find whatever bosses you do need. And doing that can be save quite a bit of time and definitely save some boss bait that most players don't have at that point. And is just a pretty good, good tool to have if you ever need to collect bosses for any reason. Now the last obstacle that people have on antenna level 10 is upgrading their antenna to antenna level 11 which you need to go ahead and defeat the it's called the Great Guardian. And to do that, I know many people struggle, but one of the main things is, is to go ahead and complete Yoko first for that tur hoverbar turbocharger, which will make you go faster and allow you to avoid the attacks easier. And then also for the grab attack is to get off your hoverboard, since I know that's a big complaint with some people, and try to walk away from the boss while he's trying to do the grab attack. Another of the attacks that can do quite a bit of damage is going to be that green laser attack during his last two phases. Those you do need to go ahead and get as close to the boss as possible. So I'd l recommend if during the last phases of the boss, just to go ahead and sit near the boss, either on your board or off your board, just so you can avoid that high damage attack. So him running into you doesn't do as much damage as the laser can do at long distance. And with that, that is all the advice that I have for navigating the most confusing part of Ghost Simulator. If you have any other tips or advice for people, feel free to leave them in the comments since I know I probably haven't covered all the good tips for Ghost Simulator in this respect. Um, but hopefully this guide can find those people that actually can use it since I know most of my content is going to be watched by people that already understand Ghost Simulator in a sense. This video may not actually reach the intended audience. Um, and so if you do see anyone that is struggling in Ghost, World, Ghost Simulator and particularly in the Ghost World area, feel free to send them this video to help them out and understand it or just give them some tips from this video. Um, since I know I was, when I got to it, wasn't really confused, but I was also back when it, Ghost World was really small and so had very little to actually get distracted by when coming through here. And with that, I would like to say Thank you guys for watching and goodbye.